I want to show you one of my favorite tools in Photoshop, the shadow and highlight adjustments. It's amazing. Let's get into it and I'll let me show you the power of what it can do. The shadow and highlight adjustments is a fantastic tool. I'm going to use this image here in front of me because it's got a bit of a range of depth and um, some different colors in there, different textures as well. So hopefully it should be a good example to show um, to make it a little bit more clear and obvious I'm going to basically duplicate our image to begin with so we're going to go down to image and duplicate you don't have to necessarily do this this is just really for me being able to show you um, the differences that we're doing so we're going to have like a before and after effect so our shadows and highlights tool is under image adjustments and then shadow slash highlights so straight away you can already see it applies a default amount of settings that and already again is brought up a lot more detail from our original image so this is fantastic to use for images that are a little bit darker not necessarily low key or, or kind of taken at night though that can help but images that maybe just slightly maybe half a stop one stop underexposed this is going to bring a lot more detail into our photograph uh, a lot more color and we can change those and tweak those a little bit further so as you can see on our slider here we've got our areas to begin with of adjusting the shadows so already default amounts are put in so starting from zero is where our original image was but if we bump it up a little bit more we can see we just start to flash out flesh out those those shadows a little bit flatten them out and start to actually bring in a lot more detail and make the image that little bit more of a normal key Again, with the tones, we can change those as well. We can kind of flatten those whites. Or we can make them a little bit more stark. I think somewhere in the middle around about here seems to work kind of quite nicely. They're not too flat. Gives us that little bit of depth. Uh, the radius again is basically defining how much of the image that we're affecting with these changes, uh, more specifically in the shadows. Uh, as you can see, if we slide them up and down, we can kind of increase the range we can decrease it a little bit. So again, there's no one set of numbers or parameters that you need for every image. It's all perfectly individual. Now, if we move down to our next set of options, these are for the highlights. So again, we can kind of increase these or decrease these, but given that there's not that many areas of highlights in our image, only really the sky, which is pretty much blown out anyway as it is, it's not really gonna be changing too much, but you can also adjust things a little bit further again with the tones so if you can see just around the areas of the trees through the archway just how it differs around the edges of those trees there so just how much of the highlights are spreading and spilling in to the trees around again again you can play around with the radius tone it's not going to do too much on this image necessarily certainly the shadows seem to do the most difference the options of color down further here gives us the opportunity to desaturate the image a little bit more or we can really really saturate it personally unless it's a really really stylized image i pretty much stay away from either end and just keep somewhere in the middle if you want to make your image that little bit more richer a bit more punchier yeah around about kind of plus 20 to plus 40 anywhere around there should do a job quite nicely same again with the midtones. This is now giving us the opportunity to just shift those midtones. We can make them a little bit more flat and reduce the contrast a bit further by going into our minuses. Whereas we go into the plus, it just makes the image that a little bit more heavy in contrast. Personally, for me, I'd like to kind of keep it fairly neutral, so I don't tend to change it too much from there. But ultimately, there we go. Let's just press OK, and we can see the differences here. So we've got our before and our after. We've not made any other changes in terms of different tools, different adjustments, etc. That's just solely the shadows and the highlights. It's given us a lot more detail in the photograph. It's kind of just softened out those shadows a little bit more. It's made the whole image a little bit more brighter, a little bit more inviting. But I just wanted to share with you the power of that shadow and highlights tool. It's something I think is uh, invariably underused by photographers, but it's got so much potential for increasing a little bit more drama in images. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little tutorial about the shadows and highlights tool. If you have, thank you so much for watching. Keep looking out for iPhotography for more.